How did Fetty Wap even get a hold of that beat? Through uh, YouTube. I had it on my YouTube channel. It was a it was a free beat at first. <laughs> Peace, what's going down? It's DJ Payne One for BeatStars.com with a special guest, Nick E. Beats, live from Las Vegas. What's going down, sir? What's good, bro? What's going on? So, uh, how long have you been making beats? Shit, right now, probably about like eight years now. Probably about eight. I started when I was like 17, 17 or 18. It's been a minute. Uh, a fair amount of time, then. What's, what's your DAW of choice? Uh, machine. I use everything, but Machine is my favorite. I started with Machine off rip, so that's my favorite. Facts. That's interesting because a lot of producers that gravitate towards machine are the people that, I guess you think of them as more sample based producers, more boom bap producers, right. people that went from the MPC to the to the digital age, and so they pick something that that made sense. Why'd you pick machine? I don't know. I was like the first thing I seen. Like I didn't even know about FL Studio at first. I was like the first shit I seen, so I just started using it. It was easy to me from from then. Like FL Studio is actually hard to me. I can't even like process it. You know, what I'm saying like how other producers use that shit. So yeah, I got to be on machine. That's like my choice, my main. All right, so before we, we, we go any further, congratulations on Double Platinum. Let, let's uh, <laughs> talk about that for a minute. So you're Double Platinum for producing Fetty Wap's My Way single. How, yep. did, uh, how did Fetty Wap even get a hold of that beat? Through uh, YouTube. I had it on my YouTube channel. It was, a, it was a free beat at first, and then after he used it, he wanted to like, you know, like do the business all correct or whatever. So like we, talk, we chalked it up or whatever, and then I signed with him, actually. So once I signed with him, it was just everything from there. It just took off. Like, it was a wrap. Okay, let me pick up on that because I didn't, I didn't realize you were signed to Fetty Wap. Yeah, I was signed to him too, yeah. Are you still signed to him? No, nah, actually, well, I'm actually trying to work out something with him now. I've been talking with his, uh, with, like, Nick the Grid and with, like, you know, his old managers and shit. I'm mm -hmm. trying to work something right now. But I was signed with him for, like, three, four years, from, like, 21 up to, like, 23. When you signed to a, to a recording artist like that, what, what does that kind of situation entail? It was basically like, you know, an exclusive agreement with like, you know, me and him like work like I'm on his album, I'm on all his projects, like all the artists that he signed or like whoever he worked with. I'm just there like, you know, my beats get placed everywhere. So that's why I got linked up with like Rich the Kid. I got linked up with like Lil Durk, like everybody pretty much just being signed with him. Going on tour, I got songs with um with, like French Montana and like Quavo that never came out yet because I was on tour with him back in I think like two, two, like three years, like three years ago. Yeah, it was like three years ago. I was on tour with him. So like I got linked up with a whole bunch of people. So it's like a good deal being linked with an artist. So what did you do on the tour? Were you constantly working in the studio? Were you performing as well? You know what? I went with him like probably like two or three stops, but I, I was recording and just like engineering the whole time. Like I, I pretty much heard, learned how to engineer on that trip, mm -hmm. like on them three, like on them three sessions. I mean, on them uh, three shows that we went to, I learned how to like engineer and shit. So I was recording all of them. So that's basically it. Okay. So here's, here's a tough question. Um, did you order the platinum plaque when My Way went platinum the first time, and then now you got to order another one because it went double? Yeah, yeah. I only got the platinum right now. I never got the double one yet. I still got to order it. Yeah, because I think it's probably like fifty dollars more for the double. I think so, but at the time when I bought it, because it went it went double platinum like a whole year after it went like gold platinum at the same time, and then it went double platinum like a whole year later. So I just had the gold and the and the platinum plaques first. So yeah, I still need to get them. I'll be lagging on that shit. I need to do it. No, I feel you because it adds up the the cost the cost of these plastics. Yeah, actually, start I adding. forgot about it. You know what? You just reminded me right now. <laughs> you just reminded me. I got to do that. I should be getting a percentage from uh, from Jewelbox. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> what <laughs> kinds of attention did you start getting um, after the success of that single? Oh man, a lot because um, I had opened up a studio like probably like six seven months after it came out. So I started having like T Wayne come through. I had a whole bunch of artists come through. Like it just, I just started blowing up. Like I had like two thousand followers on the gram. I jumped up to like twelve k like instantly, like just instant. Like it, it was it just blew up. It just blew up. So what what did you do in terms of social media, or what did Fetty Wap do to to help you get visibility for that record? Um, probably just like tagging me and making sure like you know my tag was in there. Um, when the Drake version came out, cause you know Drake had remixed it. Yeah. When that version came out, they made sure that like, my tag was in there. Like I got the credits, all that. Like they made sure you know my name was there. You know, I noticed that because the tag, because I play that record all the time. Um, but the the tag was present and very loud and prominent in the Drake remix, but not so much yeah. in the original version. Right, because the original version is actually like my mix. They didn't they didn't do like another mix down. But then for the Drake version, they had an engineer actually mix it. So I guess he like raised that he raised the volumes up on it. So there were some other changes made to the 
to the Drake version? Were you yeah. brought into that session to make those changes, or was that the engineer that did that? I think the engineer did that because they recorded that one in Jersey or somewhere else. I was in L.A. because that's where I'm from, so I was in L.A. So, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know what they did on there. That was They did it without me. Okay, so given that you had all of that attention coming in uh, for that hit record, what advice can you give a producer to prepare for not just the attention but the offers for, you know, publishing deals, management, this and that? What, what, what can you tell them? Probably just, like, be patient, don't be greedy, and just, like, you know, got to have, like, a good team and, like, have people around you that's going to, like, explain shit and make sure you're going to, like, get in the right you know, getting the right deals, but really just be patient. Cause like, you know what I'm saying? Like the first deal somebody gave me was like for 25,000. And if I would have took that out of it, selling myself short, you know what I'm saying? So like, just definitely stay patient and just, just wait. Cause if you got a big record, you're going to get paid. So just stay patient. So in terms of, of your team, did you, who did you have on your team? You had a lawyer, you had, um... yeah, I had, um, basically everybody that was repping Fetty Watt was repping me. I had the same team, the same lawyer, Navarro, uh, Danny Sue, Nick the Grid. Like, I had the same team. Everybody the same thing. Like, it was the same camp. So we just made everything easy. So let, let's talk about this, this narrative about the music business, which is that there's just no money to be made in the music business anymore, um, especially in the age of streaming. Now, so with as much or as little detail as possible, do you agree or disagree with that narrative? What, that it's not that much money to be made? Yeah. I mean, I would say that it is. I mean, I do pretty well. I mean, I'm not really even out there in the scene that much. I do pretty well. Um, but I think also I do well because I kind of stay, like, you know, independent. And I got my business in check. So I make sure, like, you know, I'm getting what I deserve. So I think that's what it depends upon. Like, if you're going to actually step out and, like, get what you deserve and, like, you're going to actually work for it and get it, then, yeah, you're going to get paid. If not, then, nah, like, the artists take it for the most part. Because I even got a producer signed to me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got a producer signed to me, so I know how the business works, you know? So, like, other producers, for for a fact, they be trying to get on my label or, or work with me to, like, get their money because I know how it works. What, what would you say, without giving away your, your whole um, model, what would you say is one of the most overlooked revenue streams for producers? Oh, probably uh, putting, they, putting the beats on, like, YouTube and doing the content monetization. Probably that, because I make a lot from that, because I still upload on the daily. If you're talking about for like uploading instrumentals and things like that, for sure on the YouTube side. Okay, so you have a, a hit single under your belt, and oftentimes people will separate those industry accomplishments from the world of internet producers. You just said you upload beats pretty regularly right. to YouTube still. Uh, what has your relationship been with the online beat licensing game? Um, I mean, that's something that I did too from the beginning that I still do now. Like, I mean, I always did both of them hand in hand, you know, I like doing both for the most part. So I think it's interesting too, because it doesn't sound like you're slowing down, even though you have these industry success stories. Yeah, no, I never did. Like, I just kept working on both, just kept doing more and doing more. Like, once I like got a better studio, I started making more beats so I could upload more on YouTube, have more for the artists. Like, yeah, I just started working more. And even now, four years later, I'm still working at the same pace. So, Because I have a lot of producers that contact me and they're concerned that the two worlds are incompatible. Have you ever had any problems existing in the industry and in the Internet? No, nah, because I feel like they go hand in hand for me. I mean, Fetty Wap found my beats on, um, on my YouTube channel. Um, I mean, there's so many artists that have found my beats on YouTube and just started using them. And they hit me up later. And there you go. You know? Who who are some other artists that discovered your tracks on YouTube? Uh, definitely Lil Durk found them. PNB Rock, he found a beat on there. It's um, it's PNB Rock. It's called Eighty Eight by him. Uh, Lil Durk and Love Folk, they found that on my channel. Um, it's a song called Rich the Kid Fez. They found that beat on my channel. I got like at least four or five songs that came from just being on my channel, and they all stream real good. Okay, yeah, so what were you? Uh, what do you attribute? that success of those those uploads to i mean what kind of keywords were you using what kind of strategy did you use to get uh, visibility man you know what i don't even know like them videos just got like 40 50 000 plays i think one of them got like eighty thousand. they just they just liked it probably i don't know i mean they mm. just generic you know like the generic tags like i got um i think one of them is like a soldier boy type beat that i think the rich the kid used it was just like a soldier boy type beat just just regular you know i ain't really do nothing special for the most part that's interesting because, yeah. you know, you, you hear a lot of producers talk about having a separate 
batch of beats like these beats over here i'm going to put online but these beats over here i'm going to save for my, my right. placements and if, yeah. if you had used that strategy you might not have placements exactly yeah because i mean i just put whatever you know what yeah. i'm saying like i might have a beat that's not mixed right and i'll put it on there i might have something that's mixed all the way and sound fire and i still put it on there it's like either way yeah so i guess that's important to note that as producers are hoarding their best beats to try to get placements you're competing with Nikki Beats, who's putting his best beats on the internet. Yeah, it's, it's because, not going to be easy to compete with that. Yeah, no, but you know something else too is that um, I'm with Repost Network, and Repost Network do like my monetization. So like when I put a beat on there, if like an artist downloads it, you know, and they put it on a channel, I get paid for it. So like the artist got to hit me and get the exclusive rights so I can take down the um, take the monetization off of it or whatever. Mm. So it's like the way I'm kind of like protected. So even if they steal it, I'm still good. Okay, so I see why you picked that as your as your most yeah. overlooked uh, revenue stream for producers. So, talking still about um, licensing Beats Online, what made you join BeatStars? Um, you know what? It was because of my manager. He was like, you know, the place that I was on before, they was I wasn't I wasn't really getting that many sales. So he was like, yo, you come over to BeatStars, it's more popping or whatever. So just he set me up. You know, he made my whole account. I started uploading. Like I, I got a little process where I upload every Monday. I put like five to ten beats every Monday, every week. Um, I miss this week because I'm in Vegas, but for the most part, I'm always consistent with it, you know? So, yeah, but I've been, I've been getting some good sales on B-Stars, though. Do you find sure. that, that the consistency, that, that every single Monday upload schedule has increased your sales? Yeah, definitely, because before, I would just upload, like, whenever I had something that I thought was fired, then I would just put it on there and then start promoting it. But, like, now that my followers know, like, every Monday I'm putting some shit, like, they be ready for it. Mm. Yeah, and I do it in the afternoons, too, so, like, they be knowing and they be ready. Like, so, usually, like, as soon as I post, I'll get, like, two, three sales, like, right away as soon as I post on Mondays now. Yeah. What other tools or techniques are you using to, to market your beats online? You use social media, Instagram? Yeah, just really uh, Instagram, Twitter, and then YouTube for the most, and SoundCloud, and SoundCloud, and that's it. I just um, upload on YouTube, upload on SoundCloud, promote it real quick, and then that's really it from there, because I think my YouTube channel got, like, 40K or, like, 35K, so I just upload it, just chill, it just goes. And you just link everything back to the BeatStars page. It's just automatic. Yep. And everything just goes, yeah. And then sometimes I'll have like a free beat where it's like it's free for nonprofit or whatever. So like if you use it but you want to make money, you still got to go buy it on BeatStars. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm on the free side. I'm on, I'm on all the sides just getting views, being seen. So given that, that you're enmeshed in the, you know, in the industry and in the internet, where do you see the music production landscape changing over the next five years? You, you see it? going deeper into the internet you know what music is kind of weird right now in my opinion it's like it's, it's real it's like i don't know i don't know right now it's kind of weird like i feel like it could go more into like the b star internet way but i don't know it just depends like yeah i don't know music is just weird right now i feel like artists ain't really putting out their best music i feel like the producers is like everybody making the same thing right now like it just depends. Like, I feel like music going to have to change. It's going to have to get better for it to, like, start progressing. Are, are you familiar with a lot of the other BeatStars producers? Um, a few of them, like Nick Mira, um, like the Internet Money guys, for the most part, because they were Navarro. So, like, I know most of them. Um, it's St. Laurie. So, like, you know, I don't really know anybody else on BeatStars, though. I'm still new. I've only been on BeatStars, like, a month now. Like okay, and just in that month, you've noticed that that drastic of a difference, then. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, let's talk about that. Where do people find your online beat catalog? Um, probably from YouTube for the most part. Just searching on YouTube. And yeah. it would just be it's just your channel's name, Nikki Beats. Nikki Beats, yeah. Just search up Nikki Beats. Go on my channel. I always got my beats because I upload usually like three, four times a week. So. My B Stars link is in my info in the bio or whatever. So you just click it. I feel like that's where I get my most sales from. And then in terms of social media, how do people follow you? Uh just through Instagram, through Twitter. They uh at Nikki Beast two times on Instagram and Nikki Beast just on Twitter. And what, what can we look forward to from Nikki Beast in, in twenty nineteen? Are we ever gonna hear the Quavo records? Are we ever gonna hear all this unreleased stuff? And you know what? I got I got like eight unreleased songs from jay critch i got like two unreleased from rich the kid i got that quite i'm saying that quavo french montana i mean if they drop them i got a whole bunch of shit that's coming you know what i'm saying um but right now i'm working with um fetty wap because i feel like he about to drop some shit that's gonna be hard we got some shit that's hard um i'm working with jay critch obviously he got a mixtape coming out in may i believe next month 
So that's that's gonna be some some dope shit on there. So yeah, I'm just working with him, Rich Kid, everybody. We got a lot of shit coming up. Cool. Well, once again, appreciate your time. Appreciate you uh, sharing your experiences. Follow Nikki Beats. Hear those yep. those exclusive. Uh, actually, go 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 follow Quavo too and tell him to drop these records. Yeah, French Montana. <laughs> tell French Montana to drop that Quavo and Kidney record. It's called <laughs> Call Mama. <laughs> tell him to drop that ASAP. Okay, cool. I'm happy you gave us an exclusive. Appreciate you yeah. once, once once again. <laughs> thank you.